In high school, we played a game. Many years later, we got back together to play one more. Little did we know, this time, the game was real. Join me, Aram Vartian, on Start Playing Games for a brand new type of fantasy role-playing. In Die RPG, you play a group of real-world, deeply flawed adults who are transported into a fantasy realm via a predatory, sinister role-playing game. The game transforms your characters into paragons and rewards them with strange and frightening powers. In Die RPG, you are confronted with your truest desires and deepest fears. And only you can decide when the game is over. Check out all of my available Start Playing Games campaigns at aram.gay. My name is Aram, and my pronouns are he, him. I'm the producer of the Dungeon & Dragons podcast, God's Fall. My name's Dylan. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm a physicist from Canada. Welcome to Kill Every Monster. So I vortex warp, key three. 50 feet up, he appears directly above this thing's shoulder, drops a few inches, has to balance it himself because it's constantly moving, pulls up his sword, and just as he's about to sink it deep into this thing's neck, the head turns and one giant eye swings to focus on him. So, five attacks. Here we go. First is bite. <laughs> Does a... I have to do a lot of math with this guy. 37 hit. <laughs> That's also 37 hit. Yes. <laughs> Does tissue paper catch on fire? <laughs> 34 piercing damage. And you are now grappled. It's almost a momentum thing more than it is like actually leaning. It comes towards you, lunges at its own shoulder and shifts. It just brings everything together and barely manages to get around you. You are basically in a cage of teeth and spit. It's a Nine Inch Nails album, Cage of Teeth and Spit. Then two claw attacks. Okay, so the first one... Oh, hold on. Have you been rolling with disadvantage? No, I haven't. Okay, so uh, we're going to say the first two rolls were both enough to hit Austin. The bite still goes through. That first claw attack is going to miss. Roll another attack with disadvantage, and we'll see if that hits for the second claw. Sorry, I totally forgot. No, that's all right. I also forgot until just now. Okay, with disadvantage. Oh, I rolled two 18s. So, uh, I think that's 37. Well, my AC is 25 right now because I shielded, so. So the second claw attack hits, and that is... The longest part is getting all the right dice. Uh, <laughs> 16 slashing damage. So we're going to do a real quick ruling. You cannot target a thing that is in your mouth with your horns or tail. That isn't how geometry works. I don't know. I think Godzilla can do it at once. <laughs> uh, well, the other thing is you haven't moved yet. So if that's the case, is that it? Well, I mean, right now there's, uh, like I said, there's a floating half. <laughs> Based on the movement determined in my last term, I am hittable at the moment. If you want to come take a piece of slapdash. It's like takeout. Can the five attacks be to different people? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can attack twice, move, attack again. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. Where are you, Slapdash? So, Keithry, the, the orc is in your mouth. The flying wizard is behind the flying cleric. The flying wizard is behind me. Who is currently exactly 50 feet in front of you at face level. Your speed is 40 and your reach is 10. Okay, so I'm going to move 40 feet. No! <laughs> and then um, I, yeah, I will do a horn attack. 
Do I have disadvantage yeah. on you this? You do have or disadvantage no? because Slapdash was keeping two of his illusory duplicates next to him. Oh, wait, I think, hold on. Let me let me double check and make sure that that's actually the ruling. I would have advantage on the Tarrasque. It does not affect the Tarrasque's attacks against me. Okay, fair enough. Then yeah. Okay, 31. Does that hit? Yeah, <laughs> yes, both of those hit. <laughs> 33 points of damage. Is the spell a uh, concentration, Gus? It sure is. So I'll I'll have to roll a concentration check here. Is that from two attacks That's total? That's from one attack. That's the horns. That's from one attack. Okay. Uh, so my concentration check is uh, I have to beat an 11 on, on constitution, right? That's Hold half on. the damage. It's DC 10 or half the damage you take. Oh, wait, I can't multi. It's 16, not 11. That is a fail. Uh, all my duplicates ping, 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 disappear. Oh no, boss. We tried, boss. Good luck, boss. I'm also going to use my tail attack on you. <laughs> sure. No, that makes sense. Totally. Yeah. The horns get you a little higher so the tail can just rip around and smack <laughs> you. Yeah. Boom, boom. I'm getting. <laughs> does 24 hit? Yeah, sure does. Okay. 26, blood, uh, bludgeoning damage. Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. And then you must uh, do a strength saving throw. So the strength it's a strength saving throw or be knocked prone, but he's currently flying. So I think we're going to leave the strength saving throw in place and we'll say that you're going to lose 10 feet of altitude. That sound fair? Totally. I only got a 16. So you get knocked sort of up and back and all of these duplicates poof and suddenly like a baseball this this tail just comes through and slaps you i am getting the shit beaten out of me yeah Mm -hmm. keith it is your turn i'm in this mouth i don't want to be in this mouth you can use your action to try to escape at a dc 20 cool i will first rage uh, so you'll hear you the Tarascors and then Kifri roars at it in its mouth. <laughs> and it's gonna start trying to lift the mouth off of it. As this blast of air is just coming past you from this roar. I got a 22. Uh, so just like push this mouth open. Uh, <laughs> I wanna get, just get on its head. Give me an athletics check to basically transition this from like, it, it's a, you're basically inside a fucking crocodile's mouth trying to stretch it open. And now you have to manage to convert that. How's a 30 for you, sir? Ooh, that will do. So you like pull this thing's mouth open, just that standard, like full press. And when it slams shut, you're just on its lip. And you manage to segue that into that quick climb and it's, you know, like seven feet of your movement, just climbing up its face, looking this thing in the eye. I would like to use a legendary action. How far away are you, P3? I'm on your head. Okay, I would like to use my chomp. Make a bite attack as you pull that standard ass dog trick of treat on your nose. (laughs) Get back here. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Okay, it is a 29. You get up there and you start hacking away and you feel like there's a moment of just like, not even pride, just certainty. Like you feel yourself winning as its head starts shrinking back, going lower against you. And then you realize it's just getting low enough to be able to catapult you into the air and snap you when you come back down. And that is 30 piercing damage. Reduced to 15 because I'm raging. Half to 15. Yep. Volodar. Keithri is in the Tarask's mouth again. Slapdash has been knocked lower in the air, basically just battered. That's not looking good for Team Us, <laughs> which I'm trying to say. Yes, Volodar's buzz has worn off by now, so he's a little That's annoyed. That's the greatest tragedy it's, of all. It really, it really <laughs> is. 
This last 12 seconds has done a lot to his psyche. <laughs> Revolidar rises 30 more feet in the air. You see his cloak billow even further out. He pushes his sleeves up and takes both hands and, and just kind of grips them as like he's trying to crush a pair of tomatoes in his hands, right? You just, you just see his fingers shaking and all the shadows around the Tarrasque begin to gather into wisps and swirl around him and combine until they form a dragon right in front of him, which also roars and then spits acid at him. First of all, the Tarras needs to make a saving throw versus fear, which is wisdom DC 19. I am immune to fear. You are immune to fear. Of course you are, right. So <laughs> it's this big dramatic thing and the Tarras just blinks. Is this an, what are you casting? I am casting illusionary dragon. Okay. Yeah, this whole thing conjures up. And the thing is you're casting at something that again has blind sense. So as this illusion comes up and it starts to breathe out this acid, there is very distinct scent data that should be coming with this and nothing happens. There isn't meat, there isn't sweat, there is no acrid smell. It just breathes at you and that acid washes over and nothing happens. And you know, nothing was ever going to happen. But the acid's real. The acid is real. The dragon's not real. The acid sure as heck is. Okay. Well, fuck me then. Yeah, <laughs> you you smell the acrid bit. You know there isn't a real dragon. Yep. You get hit by some fucking acid. And is that from a spell? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out is like, is that directed? Like, what does that mean? I just checked if it's a line. It is a cone, so it's not going to get reflected. The other thing is, it's a cone. Oh, right. <laughs> Oh, Shit. fuck. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> point it away from the mouth. Or... Can I point it like at the bottom half? We're going to give it to you this time, but basically like you have to be aware of that going forward. Going to burn its feet. So seven die six damage uh, against an intelligence saving throw. I have to make an intelligence saving throw? Yeah, this is an anti tarask move specifically. <laughs> okay, and but I get advantage? It is a spell thing, yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, I rolled a 10. 26 points of damage. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Sizzling acid damage. That's not real. Harley, you still, uh, have, have we gotten you below 600 yet? Okay, well, you are. Yeah, you did get me under 600, so. Victory. <laughs> did you say <laughs> under 600? All right, you can cut, you can cut the, you, you can cut the audio there. We're good. <laughs> That's the grandest victory. <laughs> Volodar, is there anything you're doing after the uh, dragon? Volodar is now 60 feet in the air and his cloak is billowing extra wide. Fantastic. Slapdash. Yeah. You're about 40 feet up. Okay. Today is a bad day. Yeah, no, for sure. 40 feet up. How far away am I from the terrace? 10 feet. 10 feet because I've been getting hit. Okay, cool. Slapdash could see that the Tarrasque had to exert some sort of energy in order to resist his curse. So he doesn't have his duplicates anymore, but he does have a couple of things that have some range. So he is going to... I can't move because I'll get an opportunity attack, right? So I, th I don't... I think I am going to... You can move. But, but you'll get an opportunity <laughs> attack. Um, so, but, ah, uh, is it, oh, uh, man. But I don't want to stay, because because then if I stay here, then I get the brunt of the, some amount of the five attacks. So I think that I'm going to cut my losses here and uh, and move away from the Tarrasque. So you can take an opportunity attack on me, Harley, uh, if you want to use your reaction for that. 32. To hit? Yeah, for sure. Out of curiosity, uh, Gus, what's your AC? 18. Okay, so Harley, you miss on a one. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, good to know. 
Maybe this is a bad idea, because you can just move back to where I am. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do, Gus. We've strategized. You're going to fly 25 feet up. Oh, nice. Okay. Because now you're five feet out of reach. You're 40 feet up, but if you're at a height of 65 awesome. now, awesome. it's 50 feet tall plus a 10 foot reach. I'm glad that this has a purpose. <laughs> Wasn't just to be able to make eye contact. <laughs> Okay, 20, oh no, 30 slashing damage. 30 slashing damage, Ooh. okay. Ouch. Flapdash is looking fucked up. Rise is just out of range. Ah, uh, ah, uh, all right, how about this one? And we'll point a finger at the Tarask and cast Banishment. This is a charisma saving throw. The DC once again is 21. I'm so charismatic as a Tarask. <laughs> 17. But you have legendary resistance. Yeah, I'm going to choose to succeed that. I was going to ask, what happens to me if I'm in the mouth and I also come <laughs> I was like, nothing good, because I'm being carried at that point, right? No, you're coming with me. Yeah, so you cast your spell Slapdash and you watch, same sort of thing, basically you pluck at those shadows, those otherworldly fell darkness tendrils from the dragon and you just pull them like a blanket around the Tarrasque and you see it fizzle in midair as if it were ceasing to be and same sort of thing, you just watch it internally push out primordial magic. This is divine magic without the taint of belief. It doesn't need you to think it can do it. It's better than your magic. Well, maybe the next one will work. So Harley, you have an orc in your mouth. There's a halfling floating basically just out of reach, mocking you. And then there's the wizard. I'm going to first roar very loudly and use my Frightful Presence. The Frightful Presence, if a creature saving throw is successful, uh, it's immune for the next 24 hours. So you oh. can keep... Basically, the way that ability is worded is if you're walking through a city and new things enter the range, you can just keep terrifying everything you come across. But once something is in there, in the fight, they are sobered up and in, oh my god, I'm fighting the Tarrasque mode. I'm still going to roar for aesthetic. That's fair. There's some people that weren't in the range before that are currently like fucking petrified. <laughs> so I'm going to do my multi-attack. All right. Um, except for instead of bite, I'm going to swallow. <gasps> <coughs> yeah, I knew that was coming. Yeah, that sounds about right. Trask mates one bite attack against a larger, smaller creature. It is grappling and it is grappling Austin. If it hits, you take the bite damage, then you're swallowed, and the grapple ends. And once you're swallowed, it's fine after that, right? Yeah. There's a peaceful <laughs> resting <laughs> area inside the terrace. It's a little bed. <laughs> take a little short rest. There's a nice chaise lounge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was the 32. And swallow. You're going to take your bite damage, 4d12 plus 10, and then you are swallowed. Damn. Oh, I still do my bite damage? Oh yeah, it's it does the full, if the attack hits, the target takes the bite damage, the target is swallowed, and the grapple ends. You're no longer grappled. Great news. Nice! Yay. While swallowed, the creature is blinded and restrained. It has total cover against attacks and other out effects outside the terrasque. That's good. No more worrying about the acid. Right. Except for that uh, you take 16d6 acid damage at the start of every one of the terrasque turns. 16? D6, yeah. Well, it's only 23. Piercing damage. Only. Half to 11. Yeah, so it's only 11. Because you're raging. At the start of your next turn, if Austin hasn't gotten out, you start digesting. Okay, okay. Ugh. Vortex warp, I need to be able to see Austin, right? Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, okay. I can't get you out. Don't worry. I got out. I'll, I'll hurt the cards. Don't worry. Um, oh, and then uh, who's closer to me? Slapdash or Voldar? So the thing is... Oh, I can't see Slapdash. Both of them are actually out of range. Voldar is 75 feet up and Slapdash is 65. So with your 50 foot height, 10 foot reach, you can't grab them. What we can do 
How high can, just out of curiosity, how high could this creature jump? High, very high. It's Isn't it strength 30? Why, why, why are you doing I'm that? Just, look, I gotta play both sides here, Gus. I'm sorry. No, that's true. No, do I know, you, I, under, I respect it. Do you have to play it. both sides? I, I do. It hurts, but I respect it. Is there like a nearby building or something? What I'm gonna say, it will take one of your attacks to basically generate rubble. So that can be your tail and your, like oh. you're basically smashing up a building. Ooh. And then I will let you replace your claw attacks with throws of rubble. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yes. Gonna just chuck a lettuce cart no! at you. I'm dead. Sorry, Hold buddy. On. This is gonna be a major improvement. <laughs> because its proficiency bonus is a nine. It has no dexterity for a thrown weapon. You have better odds of not getting killed. Okay, okay, that's good. The halfling that you've felt it target you. You are yourself inherently magical. So when things try to banish you, you can trace that line. You know what did it. building next to you, tail just through the bottom floor. And it shatters. Collapses. I want you to make me an attack roll with plus nine. We're going to say if this hits, it's the it's basically the claw damage without the strength factored in, so it's just going to be 4d10. Good luck, Slapdash. To try to hit just with a pile of rocks. 26. Yeah, oh, that hits. It's going to be 4d10 bludgeoning damage from a big old pile of rocks. Uh-huh. Can it be a cart of lettuce? <laughs> I mean, maybe for the second grab. Fair. That is 30. 30? All righty. That was a good roll. How you looking, Slappy? I've, I've certainly seen better days. If this Tarask hits me again, I'm probably done. As a podcast network, our first priority has always been audio and the stories we're able to share with you. But we also sell merch, and organizing that was made both possible and easy with Shopify. (coughs) Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell and grow at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. They have an all-in-one e-commerce platform and in-person POS system, so wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. Shopify has allowed us to share something tangible with the podcast community we've built here, selling our beanies, sweatshirts, and mugs to fans of our shows without taking up too much time from all the other work we do to bring you even more great content. And it's not just us. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Shopify is also the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Because businesses that grow grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash realm, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash R-E-A-L-M now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash realm. We're going to cut the camera inside. It is dark. You can feel like anything touching the walls of where you are, Austin. It burns. It hurts. Well, luckily, I also have blind sense for 10 feet. I am covering my way out of here. Okay, so you are restrained, so you have disadvantage on these attack rolls but you can start hacking away. I will be using my bonus action to activate my fighting spirit, give myself 15 temporary hit HP and advantage on all attacks. Good time for it. So I will roll normal. It's 25 AC. Let's go. Three hits, one of them is a natural 20. I will 
roll a second d20 real quick. This is not a good place to lose a part. <laughs> it's not. Don't worry, you won't be. Lops off a kidney. Yeah, really, though. Sheesh. 59 slashing damage? Damn. Ooh. Here is the slap in the face. Because that was amazing. But? But you have to hit 60 damage internally to get it to regurgitate you. Don't worry, because I can. <gasps> I already used my bonus action. Stay in there. I think that's your turn. One point shy. Volodar. Okay, Volodar sees Akithra gets swallowed, sees that Slapdash got hit by this giant chunk of rock because it can still reach things, and he just throws his arms wide, billows his cloak more than ever. This is what every spell looks like from this person. <laughs> exactly, it's all billowing. And then points two fingers and very quickly traces this large silver circle around the terrace, 50 feet wide. And then a shimmering column of energy appears all around it like sparkling silver. And everything in that 50 foot radius goes 100 feet straight up. as I cast Reverse Gravity. There is a dexterity saving throw to grab something. On the way down, not on the way up. No, I looked at the spell. To avoid the fall. The fall means on the way down. Okay. Right? Or, no, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it refers to the motion upward because you've reversed gravity as an upward fall. fall. Oh, that's from getting you're this wrong. You're avoiding the fall because you're doing the motion with gravity. So DC 19 dexterity, dexterity save. Dexterity save. So you make it on a 19 or a 20, Harley. <laughs> okay, but I, is this a spell? This is a spell, so you have advantage. Uh, I got a 16. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my last legendary resistance. Yep. <gasps> You fall upward for just a split second, and then there's a moment where the silver falters and you drop 10 feet down. And your claw just digs into the road, slams every finger three feet deep as you just grab. You're gonna lose one of your claw attacks because one of those claws is your anchor point to the ground. All of the rubble that you've created lies a hundred feet in the air. You're left on a clean street. You are welcome. And then as a bonus action, that dragon breathes acid right in your face. So you need to make a uh, intelligence save, DC 19. You still have advantage, but you've used all your legendary resistances at this point. I got a nat 20. Oh, okay. So Boom. at this point, there's a part of the illusionary dragon where if you recognize it's an illusion, it goes away. I think on a natural 20, this Tarask would just stare right into this thing's non-existent soul and the dragon with like a roar just vanishes into a puff of shadow. As per usual, calm yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing on there you're talking about is a creature uses an action to examine the dragon and determine that it's an illusion based on an intelligence investigation check. Uh, if it discerns its illusion for what it is, it can see through it and has advantage on saving throws against its breath. Yeah. Harley already has advantage on those saving throws. I'm just trying to be dramatic. It was very good. It was good. But it was, it's it was also good... not how the spell works at all. Volodar would like be half like, oh, I should dismiss it right now because it'd be very dramatic. Be like, no, 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 we need it. Just roll your damage. Harley's going to take half. So 7d6. So that would be 29 points of damage. Half would be 14. Okay. Slapdash. You're doing your little bob and weave as all of the rubble that the Tarrasque would normally throw at you just falls at you. I think it all comes down to this, at least as far as Slapdash is concerned, because my original plan for this turn was to do a little bit of self-preservation and cast Blink. However, 
the Tarrasque has burned its final legendary resistance. So I think Slapdash sees this as a brief window of opportunity to deal with the threat entirely at the risk of his own life. Not knowing what this is really gonna do to Kithri, you know, fingers crossed about, about how all that goes. I think the way that I'm thinking about this in my head is that Slapdash doesn't really understand legendary resistances as a concept. So he's just like, maybe this spell will work. Maybe this spell will work. How about this one? So I, I'm already within 60 feet of the Tarrasque. And how about this? I'm sorry, Kithri. Uh, and I will cast Polymorph oh. uh, on the Tarrasque. I am attempting to turn the Tarrasque into a snail. Leave. That is a. That is a wisdom save. Once again, DC 21. You have advantage still. <laughs> Nat 20. Fuck. Oh. Oh, this super smart Taras. Do you, do you have a plus one to wisdom? Got a plus nine wisdom save. Well, Taras, be wise. I should have done. I should have. Taras is not wise. Taras is proficient in wisdom saves. It has been targeted by wizards for millennia. Uh, it is used to this. Yeah. No! So close, my that dude. Hurts. It was so close. Banishment would have been the move again there, but based on the flavor I gave him, he's trying to cast a different spell every turn. So that didn't work. That was my action and the spell. And I don't think there's anything I can do with my bonus action here. I'm I'm gonna use my 25 feet of fly movement to get as far away as I can. Um, I'll go I'll just fly up. Harley, roll 16 d6. Oh, I forgot about this. 63. 60 fucking three. For the record, that's only marginally above average. That isn't a particularly high roll. And you can't have that, right? Because it's acid. There is no save. It is if you are in it, you take 63 points of damage. And I'm not the, not the bear totem. Okay, right now you're on the ground. You are held there by a single claw and everything is basically out of reach. There are basically two options at the moment. Wait or fall up. It would not necessarily be a brilliant move to try to tackle the cleric by falling into the sky, but it is technically an option at your disposal. I'm gonna wait. I just feel like my survival instinct would be to hold on as much as possible. Okay. Like me, I want to fall into the air, but right. like I feel like, like, just like based on like animal instinct, they would want to hold on as much as possible. So I'm saying this, recognizing that you have a minus five to it. I'm gonna have you make me a raw intelligence check to basically notice that there is a, there's a silver circle inscribed where this spell took place. A five minus four is a one. <laughs> <laughs> what is a circle? Fall up, bad. Not fall up, want fall down. No, no want fall. <laughs> K3, it is your turn. You still alive in there, buddy? I'm still alive. And I have disadvantage. Ugh. Because what I need is to not a disadvantage so I can like actually get hit points, not just keep getting temporary hit points. But I will fighting spirit, get temporary hit points, so I roll normal. I'll roll three attacks. 29 hits. 27 hits? 25 hits. Natural 20 hits. Nice, good time for it. Okay, let's see if this is the time. I rolled a natural 20 and rolled a second 20. Holy shit. Wait, what? Wait, what? Holy shit. No way. 
I think you get out. I would say so. Just on raw principle. Like, I don't... It is completely unreasonable to try to figure out what bits of Tarasque anatomy would happen or, like, Severage. Like, I think that is just you... Like, roll all of your damage per usual. But you're going to, regardless of how much damage you deal, get out on this turn. You cut a little Looney Tunes hole. You're going to pop out. Yeah, you slit this thing open and manage to get out. Fuck yeah, that is so metal. Absolutely. Okay. Damn it. <laughs> 40, 47 damage. 47. Uh, and I think it just looks, I think tell of you see like a prick. And I step out and I guess fall. <laughs> yep. Give me a dexterity saving throw against 19. Cause you're now in the reverse gravity. 23. Ooh. I step up and grab the terrestre. You got a hold of the meat. The action, bonus action. Uh, and you, Kifri is holding on the terrestre, just looking up at everyone else, uh, covered in wounds from stomach acid. Thank God I got out. <laughs> My God. Boladar. Nothing has slowed this thing down. Not even reverse gravity has slowed this thing down. And now Volodar clearly sees that amazingly, Keithry, who has basically gotten out of everything. I've seen Keithry get out of physical things that should have killed an elephant, but Keithry always gets out and shockingly enough, they have. I see that the reversed gravity is also affecting them. I also see that Slapdash is still up there. And if this creature let go, could he Slapdash? So he's like, all right, it's time for Volador to be the hero. He releases <laughs> his reverse gravity. He pulls all of his magic inwards and he lets out a roar as his back splits. His mouth opens until it tears his own face. You can hear this rumbling scream and ice appears everywhere in a 10 foot radius as I turn into a frost worm and let out this horrible scream, casting true polymorph. Now don't stay like that True too polymorph, long. That's permanent, because right? Because permanent if you stay like that too long. <laughs> You'll want to turn that off. <laughs> that is your action for the turn. And as soon as I do that, reverse gravity ends because I can't maintain that spell as a frostworm. That is my action. Bonus action though, kick the shit out of that thing. <laughs> Because I have, I have the dragon. I still have that little acid dragon flying around. So that can wait. Actually, I might, might not. I'm gonna say absolutely yes because part of true polymorph is you just replace your mental stats with the frostworm's mental stats. The target's game statistics, including mental ability scores, are replaced with the statistics of its new form. It retains its alignment and personality. So you've created the most pompous dickhead frostworm possible, but it ain't no cleverer <laughs> than a regular ass frostworm. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> all right, so all of my spells end, which I'm also going to point out means that you're just a monster now. <laughs> he knew the sacrifice he was making. It's time to be a hero. Yep, all right. Slapdash. There are two monsters now. <laughs> but I don't get the sense that the Frostworm is hostile towards me, correct? I still believe it's my good friend Volodar. You've seen me transform into bullshit before, yeah. Also, Volodar is an illusionist. There's no real guarantee that that's not... Okay. Could just be him being weird. <laughs> that's true. Right. Did I... Wait, I'm I'm just double checking. What did the Terras do in its last turn? Because I feel like I should have gotten my shit rocked again by this point. No, because you're 65 feet up and it was holding on to the ground for the love of God. Oh my God, I'm still alive. Okay. Now I'm going to be the hero. So I've gone through basically the main three spells that I knew I was going to be using against this Terras. I'm going to cast Banishment again because Banishment has a range of 60 feet. I know that all we need to do is buy ourselves a minute. I can see that all of these different magical effects have weakened the Tarrasque a little bit. Um, and I'm never going to cast the spe same spell twice in a row. <laughs> so I'm bouncing back to Banishment. Uh, and also Banishment, most notably, is a Charisma save, not a Wisdom save. 
So I'm hoping that it'll be much, much harder for the Tarrasque. Slapdash goes, come on, come on, go away! DC 21 Charisma. I got a four and a one. <laughs> yeah! 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 Damn it! Get out of here. You pull it off. The Drask vanishes. Uh, Austin K3 just drops about 20 feet. Hurts like a son of a bitch. It's, it's just gone. There is Volodar there, an unintelligent monster. Frostworm, who just lost his target. So now, this is the place where destiny splits. Gus, I want you to roll me just a concentration check. We're just going to do one concentration check. I'm going to say it's against a ROM spell DC just for lack of having a better number. So it's against the 19. 19. The reason you're making this check is because in this, you are going to have to fight off Volodar. The specific reason why I asked if Volodar was uh, ag aggressive against me is because I could have banished Volodar as well. Oh, you can get two par targets? If I cast it at a higher level, if I cast banishment at a higher level, I can, I can target a multiple creatures. So if I had any inclination that Volodar might aggro, I would have done that. Give me an Arcana check. Because if you realize this isn't an illusion, then you would absolutely recognize the problem that has been created. Okay. Can I... I'm pulling out all the bullshit here. Because I've established that Volodar and I are good friends, uh, can I roll this with advantage? Friends is pushing it. <laughs> to me, we're good friends. <laughs> So where I think this is going to cancel out is there are two things. Volodar has done shapeshifty bullshit in the past. He has true polymorph. You know that to be true. You also know that Volodar is an illusionist. Mm-hmm. What's my DC here? Because I might just not. I have a plus zero to Arcana. Then let's make it a 15. 15? That's so possible. This is someone who can do basically perfect illusions anyway. So. That is an 11. Ah. Oh. We're going to have the silly Volatar oh, no. get rid of the Tarrasque. <laughs> Give me the constitution save against 19. Now the constitution save. All right, this I'm I'm that that's even harder to hit than a 15. I only have a plus three to con save. So <sighs> yeah, nope. That okay. funnily enough, that's also an 11. Immediately you turn around to the monster and you hear it roar. <laughs> And something reverberates in your bones wrong. And you realize that's that's not an illusion. And Volodar lunges. It's not even 100% clear if he was attacking you or just going to move and it's just that big. But when you're slammed off to the side, your concentration breaks. <laughs> And now, rather than being, you know, in the middle of a road trying to fight a titanic monster, you are stuck in the middle of a battle between a ice-breathing worm just thrashing around, smashing through buildings, and the Tarrasque, which is no less dangerous than when you made it go away. As they brawl and roll around in these streets, it, it becomes immaterial whether you are crushed because 40 feet away, the fight just goes on. The entrance to the yawning portal is smashed open. The basement is torn open and water deep floods. Moments after the water starts to rush out, there is a huge surge of energy and the Tarrasque isn't in the water anymore. No one knows where it is, not even the casters. And slowly, Waterdeep is engulfed by the unholy waters of hell.
Thank you for joining us for part one of the Tarask. For more information about us, notes for each episode, and ways you can help support the show, head over to killeverymonster.com. If any of the ideas we've discussed on the show have sparked some of your own, tell us about it on Twitter at KEM Podcast. You'll find me at DJ Malenfant and Aram at Aram Vardian. For ad-free episodes, early releases, bonus episodes, print-ready maps, our new audio DMs notes, and my character sheets for each encounter, head over to patreon.com slash killeverymonster. You can also listen to ad-free episodes and bonus content by subscribing to the show on Apple Podcasts. Our intro theme and many of the sound effects you hear in the show were created by BattleBards. Check them out at BattleBards.com. Thank you for joining us for the finale of the Tarask. Our guest was Harley. You can find her on Twitter at Harley Kane. We were also joined by Gus Rachels at Gus Rachels and Austin at Sailor Scout Austin. And if you are anything like me and all of that information just fell right out of your head, you'll find everything you need at killeverymonster.com. And we'll see you next time for Kill Every Every Monster. Monster. Attention, fans of fairy tales that are magical, hilarious, and grim. The award-winning Pinna original podcast, Grim, Grimmer, Grimmest, has new episodes out now. While you've probably heard of the Brothers Grimm, you've never heard these tales told in quite this way. I'm Adam Gidwitz, best-selling and Newbery Honor author of Books for Children, and in Grim, Grimmer, Grimmest, I share the real, weird, grim fairy tales with real, weird, hilarious kids. In each episode, you not only get to hear a story, but you also get to enjoy this group guessing what'll happen next, cracking jokes, and sharing their own perspectives on the tales. Also, heckling me. They love to heckle me. The episodes are rated on a scale from grim to grimmer to grimmest, so there's always a great variety of tales to explore with your family. You can listen to Grim, Grimmer, Grimmest now wherever you get your podcasts. And be sure to follow the show so you don't miss new episodes. This show was produced and edited by Dead Ghost Productions. Find out more about us and all the shows we make at deadghostpro.com.